Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Today I have with me again Sri Narsimhan and we are continuing the saga of Silicon Valley Bank. What happened in the last 24 hours? Were there some decisions made? First off, it looked like there was going to be nothing and then a few hours later something happened. To know all about this and more and the impact of this for the other banks. Remember, there is exposure of $620 billion. Now let's welcome the guest, Sri Narsimhan. Sri, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskaram, Namaste and Namaskar to everybody. Thank you. So Sri, what happened? I thought at uh, 8 a.m. in the morning, the Janet Yellen had said nothing, you know, we're going to treat this just like any other bank. And then something happened. Walk us through what happened. Yeah. Uh, there has been a war room set up in the Fed uh, because, after all, they they control the spigot, right? And uh, this is a one-off situation, and it's not been uh, planned for in any budget, right? So they needed the Fed to make entries in their ledger. Uh, as you know, the Fed makes and uh, disposes of electronic money. Uh, so to reverse back, you know, we can go back to uh, where we left off last time. Yes, you know, yes. Exactly 24 yes. hours ago. So I, I'll put up the slide deck here. Go ahead. Yeah, it looks like this is episode two and uh, hopefully it will end here, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, so knows. the canary in the gold mine is episode one. We didn't have a notion of episode two then. We didn't know what was going to happen. But the question really is, is this a one-off thing or is it a systemic thing? Is it one-off or is it systemic? And uh, it really matters, right? Uh, the word idiosyncratic has been thrown a lot in the last 24 hours. And so the question is, uh, are we just going to say one bank or is this going to be a cascading effect? And looks like in the last 24 hours, the determination was this is not a one-off or this can actually be, uh, this can spread before you know it. So that's what I think the conclusion was in the war room yesterday. Although they're not going to come out and say it. There won't be any press release saying there is a crisis, right? The crisis will be managed. Uh, the, <laughs> revolution, the revolution will not be televised either, you know, so... <laughs> okay, let, let's go to the next slide because I want to show our viewers the impact or the size of this failure. The biggest ever bank that failed was Washington Mutual in 2008 to 307 billion. And, and I think they failed because they gave a lot of these loans, which were dubious home loans. And here in Silicon Valley, this is startups. And if startups can't pay, uh, take their money out, then that means they can't make salary, they can't make payroll, which means a lot of people would have come, uh, the payroll is coming up in just a couple of days time. So maybe that was something that weighed in their mind because they also included Signature Bank that failed in the East Coast Street. Yes, uh, you know, there's the West Coast Silver Gate, there's Signature in the East Coast. Um, you know, you, you show me uh, Wam, Washington Mutual, which is lovingly called Wamu. And uh, we all saw how during the GFC great financial crisis, Wamu actually was uh, Wamus, right? In Spanish, it's it's not there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it got, it got uh, eaten up, right? Um, so right now there are just four large banks in the US, right? Uh, Bank of America, J uh, JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, and Citigroup. Citibank, Citibank. Right, yeah. right, you're right. Um, Silicon Valley Bank, I mean, I am amazed at the size of this in relation to Wamu, really. Uh, all the other banks, that circles that you see are actually banks that went out of business. So this is this is big stuff. And that's, I think, uh, was definitely a part of the game when they were looking at the dashboard and saying, hey, what do we do right now? Uh, next. So a bit of recap, we will spice it up a little bit uh, from yesterday. Yesterday, we had a lot of open questions, if you remember, you know, uh, I saw the comments from yesterday. Um, uh, people were pretty agitated. Uh, there was a lot of good comments, but then, you know, uh, the questions around, uh, hey, why aren't you coming out and taking a position? Why aren't you saying this? Half the qu questions were around Adani and Hindenburg. You know, I anticipated that. 
But let's go through and, you know, recap what really happened. You know, liquidity crisis in Silicon Valley Bank. It was just a matter of a duration risk. They had, uh, they didn't, they didn't loan a bulk of their assets. They basically kept it for safekeeping with the safest uh, instrument out there called the Fed, right? And the question was, uh, is this going to spread? Um, and is the risk going to spread throughout the ecosystem? And then, of course, a lot of employees uh, were potentially impacted. We didn't know how much yesterday. And we left off with this uh, kind of a um, you know, ham-handed statement saying, oh, you know, there's going to be narrative issues. There's going to be uh, political jockeying. Guess what? That's exactly what happened. You know, uh, uh, of course, you want to provide resolution to those affected, right? Uh, if, if you're affected, you want to be, you want to make sure that you are safe. But the most important piece here, I think, was each of the political leaders, uh, wherever they are in the spectrum, they had to actually take that message and kind of slightly pivot it and change it to their, uh, depending upon their constituency. So I, I saw a lot of that going on in the last uh, 24 hours, really. Optics and narratives to others matters. More so than actually... Uh, delivering, you know, resolution to those affected. So the questions, some are easy, some are difficult, right? Uh, the big questions really were, will the government intervene? That's where we left off yesterday. And uh, if they do, will they encourage uh, risk-taking? And when I say risk, I'm talking about unusual risk-taking, um, not the usual ones. Will they push the needle such that, you know, um, returns are always a game of risk and reward, right? It's like how much risk that you take and uh, the reward should be commensurate to that risk. But while chasing uh, big returns, uh, people or, or executives may take a higher risk but not disclose that to the rest of the shareholders. So they may not perform their fiduciary responsibility to look after the interests of the shareholders. So that's what moral hazard is. Uh, and then there's this identity crisis, right? I mean, if you're screaming that you are the leader of the free world and then capitalism and free enterprise should prevail, the question is, when, when one of your bigger players are affected, then what do you do? Especially when they don't come under the, the regulatory too big to fail uh, safety net, right? So the question is, where does capitalism start and where does it end? And there's this new thing called uh, libertarianism. Not a new thing. It's already there. It, it has been there as a, a third leg of the stool. Question is, you know, when do you step in and help people who should know how to, how to uh, manage risk? And then the question is, should you say uh, the B word? The B word is bailout, right? And if you're going to bail out the rich guys, the poor, the poor guys, the voters are basically going to make a mental note of it. So that's what we left. And, and I know I'm kind of slowed down here, but moving this a little bit, the process kicked in yesterday, right? Uh, you had uh, uh, the FD, the state regulatory authority that I referred to kicked in. It, it put forth its uh, what it's going to do in breaking up uh, this bank and uh, basically making people whole up to $250,000. So that's what, that's how, you know, the response started rolling. But but people were not happy with that, right? Go to the next slide. Uh, yeah. So this was big because just one of the uh, incubators out there, Y Combinator, uh, had 10,000 uh, startups on its uh, funding list and uh, imagine 10 employee 10 employees per 100 100, 100 employees. yes yeah. 100 employees there is a cascading uh ricochet going on right uh it's not just y combinator directly employed startups but then their customers and their customers right this is orders are just going to freeze right and and there was uh, a lot of pressure put by uh some tech leaders on their representatives, political leaders, elected leaders, right? That's what happened uh, all the way till uh, mid-afternoon today. So finally, uh, at 2 o'clock, two, two 3 a.m. Indian time, 
uh, finally, 3 a.m. Monday, right, Monday Indian time, uh, finally, uh, an announcement was made, and it was a perfectly harmonious announcement, right? You have the Treasury announcing because they are the administration. Imagine if in, in the Indian context, uh, uh, Srimati Ramanji comes in, the finance minister comes in, right? And her office comes in and then uh, stands with the RBI leaders. Uh, and imagine if there is a, uh, I, I, I'm not sure about uh, this body, but imagine there's a body out there that uh, looks at guaranteeing deposits in India. Uh, the three, uh, three parties would come together and they uh, uh, put in a joint statement. So, you know, these kind of things are pretty choreographed. The words are pretty standard. Uh, but but really, if you really read up the words uh, loudly, you see that this is almost like quantitative easing, right? Imagine we are in a secular regime of quantitative tightening. The guy is talking about 50 bips, 25 bips before, 50 bips next. And all of a sudden, you like take a, take a bounce down uh, the, the QE, uh, what is it called? 2.1 or 3.0 or whatever. The language is pretty, pretty interesting, right? We are taking this is, uh, decisive actions to protect the U.S. economy by strengthening public confidence in our banking system. Well, what does that mean? Well, what does the contra mean? If you're showing it to strengthen public confidence in the banking system today, what was yesterday? That, that's how you, you kind of parse this, right? And then you look at uh, another statement out there, which... Uh, basically gave me uh, the idea for the title. It says, we are announcing a similar systemic risk exception for Signature Bank. It's another bank that got affected. Uh, so, so now you're carving out exceptions, right? Uh, the question is, is this going to be uh, the first instance and we'll stop here? Or will there be multiple instances? So just to be sure, uh, these guys went ahead and did something more. So they they rolled out something called the Bank Term Funding Program. It's a new program. And they kind of put in uh, $25 billion worth of, uh, you can say a, a credit line kind of thing. If you want- That it, is the PE. That is the PE for now. Uh, PE as in? Not PE. What do you call it? Quantitative. QE. 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 Yeah. Sorry. No. So you're right. Uh, you know, that easing part of it is that uh, ledger entry that they have done uh, notionally uh, until it gets called by one of these uh, dis distressed uh, institutions, right? So that's what's going on. To and they said the charter is to fully protect all the depositors. So the, the magic words were uttered today by Janet Yellen at CNN uh, in the morning where she said... I, we will fully protect all the depositors, insured and uninsured, right? Uh, so this is big deal. Uh, imagine this flips over and it's another country. Imagine if India does this. Well, um, you know, look at what happened in the Adani case. Hindenburg, they went to town on what I would call as peanuts compared to what is happening here. This is a huge deal. A $207 billion bank goes belly, belly up. Two days or three days after Forbes rates it one of the best run banks, one of the talk show hosts talks it up. And I have some other questions on the stock and all that, but please finish your stuff and then we will go to questions. My questions first. Absolutely. You know, uh, we should definitely cover some of these questions. Uh, let me get to the next slide here. Um, I always look up to Balaji Srinivasan. Uh, he's, uh, he's just an amazing voice here. At times, he may seem uh, his his voice seems uh, sticking out like a sore thumb, but he is fearless. Uh, and he basically said, "Hey, uh, how are you going to make this money?" Right? Um, he's blaming uh, this situation um, as being created by the Fed. Right? The Fed actually telegraphed in December of 2020. They telegraphed a 0.1 percent. Uh, increase over the next three years, right? But what really happened was 4.75%. Uh, so it's a 47 multiples right. on, yeah. on their, they, they missed the mark, right? And that's what 
Balaji is basically hammering them against. Uh, yeah, so is that it? Is all good on the Western front here? Uh, unfortunately, kind of. Kind of because uh, there is this bank, you know, uh, Silvergate that did an exchange uh, network, a very secure network to connect various other exchanges. So every circle you see around this, starting from Coinbase, Paxos, Gemini or whatever, they're all crypto exchanges. And uh, Silvergate came up with an exchange network in the middle and they are in trouble right now. So there is a cascading effect but it's going towards the unregulated or lightly regulated side of the market. See, when you're cleaning up everything uh, on the better side of the world, you kind of push things uh, like, like, okay, this is not a good example, but when you're cleaning up, you, you clear the dust from your house and it goes to your neighbor's house. That's something <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't come up with a better example, but that's what's happening here, right? Uh, there's a cascading uh, effect on uh, crypto and crypto related institutions and uh, infrastructure. I'm not saying crypto is going down the tubes, but I'm saying that they had just put, you know, spit and gum kind of matchsticks kind of deal. And now uh, there is there is a ripple effect going in the, the, the side where things are a bit tenuous and weak. Uh, yep, I, we talked about this. Uh, We'll we'll have to follow Silvergate, right? Silver Silvergate as well as Signature Bank. So so if I understand right, just for our viewers' sake, so there were three banks that failed. Silvergate also was a bank, right? Yes. Okay, so so they have played partiality in the sense that they said Signature, you're okay. Silicon Valley Bank, you're okay. Silvergate, not so, and they are letting that to fail. Something like that. There is, there is something. In... You're right. There is something going on where they are saying that well. You know, going back to that adage, a crisis is a terrible thing to waste, right? Unfortunately, we may think it's the law of unintended consequences, but on the other side, there might be intended consequences. Uh, you know, our friend Michael Burry, the big short guy, the guy who predicted uh, the previous crisis and who made big bets uh, around that, uh, he is not happy that the government is saving. Uh, sick institutions, uh, and he is, he is basically stated that uh, fact. He, he is a pretty interesting character. Uh, like a, he's a canary in the gold mine, by the way. <laughs> some people say canary. Some people say is the lead steer. Uh, but but uh, such such folks basically, you know, make a statement and they have the data and facts to back it up. So there, you know, um, I don't have a next step slides here, but this is one of the last slides. Okay. The guy, the guy doesn't follow anybody. Did you notice that? He follows right, zero right. people and 1.4 million people follow him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's true. That's true. Uh, um, um, okay. So let us say tomorrow uh, the bank will open, Silicon Valley Bank will open as usual, and it'll start, you know, trading and it'll, you know, it'll give money to people who need it. All that's going to happen. There is going to be definitely a run on the bank. Many will flee to the big four that you mentioned. The more important thing, the thing that matters to many of the Silicon Valley Bank investors who bought their stock, what happens in such a case? Is the stock price going to start trading back where it was? Will it be like as if it just has a X, Y, Z billion dollars on its books as a loan, which it has some sort of a payment plan? Is that how it's going to go? Or is there something more here? So the current state is not that clear because everything is changing by the hour. Right? The last press release I read was there's something called DINB, a new bank formed by FDIC in receivership of Silicon Valley Bank. So the entity called Silicon Valley Bank now exists as DINB. So, so the shareholders are wiped out. Okay, So that is one bucket. In the second bucket, what you have is uh, potential shooters for the erstwhile Silicon Valley Bank. And I don't think that conversation has actually concluded to, uh, to the public's uh, uh, knowledge, really, because 
just uh, there, there was some deadline going on uh, for a white knight to come and make a presentation. I think that that door has not been fully closed. So that is the second bucket. If it does open, then you'll have a recapitalization of the erstwhile Silicon Valley Bank. I'm not sure whether they'll, they'll be able to keep the ticker and all of that other stuff. But all the shareholders will be wiped out, zero. There'll be new set of shareholders coming in, right? So that is the second. And the third one is government is not in the business of running a business. Well, wait yes. a minute. Who said that? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. It's, it's, yeah. it's, uh, our, our prime minister said that in one of the speeches. And, and that is true, right? Uh, even in the U.S., if at all that's true anywhere, it should be in the U.S., uh, the bastion of capitalism. Government should not be in the business of running a business. If that is the case, then uh, what will the government do by holding uh, the, the, the past erstwhile Silicon Valley Bank, even for 48 hours? Wh why should they even touch it? Right. So there are these open questions, sir. Uh, I think the next eight hours until... Uh, well, 12, uh, let me say 10 hours until the market opens, uh, we will know. The The market, I think, might have a circuit breaker. Uh, it Well, I think it's already delisted, right? So that delisted, mm -hmm. who, who's going to, if shareholders are zero, who's going to trade, right? So I think that's, that's going to happen. On the other banks, there's going to be some sort of circuit breaker going on until, uh, it, it, until the resolution of that fund that we talked about, the stabilization fund, is actually closed. So that's where I think I would be surprised if they start trading next week. But, you know, this government has made a mess of some other organizations like this. For instance, if you take Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, hmm, they also were on the verge of uh, breaking down completely. And then they recapitalized it and they did not get they take the shares off of the market. And the shares were trading. However, that that trade price isn't really reflective of the performance of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac post-2008 recovery. See, have you been following those two stocks? Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, they are a special breed. Uh, they are backed by the government. Then don't trade it in the market, man. If you are a special breed, you shouldn't be trading it in the market. I'm a dumb guy. I'm just looking at, hey, these guys are profitable. These guys are the lenders of the last resort. They exactly. can't, they are too important to fail, not too big. They're too important to fail. Therefore, I'll invest there. And the thing is, there have been lawsuits pending. No court appears to want to resolve this. I mean, we, we blame India saying that the justice system is slow, that it is flawed. Hey, US of A is no better. I'm just, you know, I'm yeah, just you know, uh, stuck. One of the wise people I used to work with always said that, you know, don't, don't make the same mistakes, right? Make some new mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I take it to heart, really. Make, make mistakes so, only once. But if you see somebody like, like an institution in the U.S. make the same mistake again, again, and again. In fact, in 1990, in 1989, they had a, a unit called Resolution Trust Company, RTC, and there was a savings and loan crisis. Every 10 years, they have clockwork, they have something going on, LT, okay. LT, CM, and then, uh, you know, GFC, and then now this. Yes, indeed. And uh, that's where we stand right now. Silicon Valley Bank is operational. The payrolls may be able to be run for this uh, second half of the month. And uh, as far as the future of the banking crisis itself is, last question for you, Sri, $620 billion is the exposure out there. That might be something similar in different banks. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah. Where do you think those things will be? So the last conversation we had about this, you know, I, I didn't try to do complete the math there. You said 60 yeah. trillion in the previous episode, and then we did a 1% on it, which is 600 billion. That 600 billion is a notional amount of unrealized losses on the books of all the banks that have dealt with government debt, household debt, corporate debt, and so on. Okay. So these guys themselves have probably taken a hit of, you know, anywhere from 15 to $20 billion on the book on the unrealized losses. Now, it, the losses are realized only when the bonds are sold in a distressed situation. When all the guys say, give me my deposit back, boom, you know, you have to sell all your bonds at a lower price. So that is the realized losses. 
so 600 billion is a big money uh, for the even for the us you know uh, and that is i would say uh, unrealized and people we may shrug their shoulders and say but hey you know if you hold it for 10 years uh, until maturity you didn't see that right you uh, what's that uh, saying called you know if a tree falls in the forest would you hear it kind of thing so if um, it all dipped and it went up to maturity and everybody was made whole at the end of 10 years then what is the issue no issue right i think uh, half the people are terrified about it half the people are kind of saying okay the the terif the terror is really about what next what will happen next what is that leg of the stool that's going to give away yes indeed and uh, we'll wait and see how things play out thank you so much uh, sri and viewers please like share and subscribe to our channel don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications and i don't know maybe this is the end of this episode series maybe we'll be back for one more we never know so stay tuned thank you once again we are going to have a live program with delhi r rajagopalan at 11 o'clock india time and this will be on some new rapid political development the national investigative agency is also looking at sisodia something more that this fellow has done mischief so please do tune in for that one and again thank you so much namaskar namaskar